Hi guys, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm giving some thrifted finds a French country makeover using IOD. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. My first project is this wood plaque that I found. It was in good shape, but obviously I wanna give the front of it a makeover. So after cleaning, I'm going to be adding two coats of Dixie Bell's buttercream chalk mineral paint. Once my paint is dry, we're going to be selecting a design from the Melange Paint Inlay by IOD. I've been wanting to use these lovely sunflowers for a while, so I'm going to trim that and we're going to keep that text up the top as well. I'm going to trim this a little bit just to have a bit of a cleaner line and then I'm going to do a even coat of paint over the top of my already dry paint layer. You need wet paint for the inlays to work, so I'm putting an even coat there and not too thick but also not too thin we need enough for our inlay to work with then I am placing my inlay design side down that grid should be facing up at you and then I'm going to gently press my inlay down making good contact with the paint now if you don't want wrinkles if I have heard it suggested that you lightly mist the inlay before you lay it down I don't mind them personally because I like a vintage look so you can see I have then misted my inlay and now I'm just very gently dabbing my inlay to smooth it out. After it's been drying for about an hour, I'm going to mist it again. I'm going to wait about 60 seconds and I'm just dabbing off some of the excess water and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to carefully start peeling away the inlay. It's best to go slow here and to take your time if you feel any resistance, lightly mist it again and then keep going. Set this off to one side when you're done because you will get another use, maybe two out of these. Once I'm done here, I'm going to seal the entire thing with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer. And then I'm going to brush on Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. You want to spray this with a sealer first so that you don't get any smudging. I'm now adding a border of Dixie Belle's Cactus Silk Mineral Paint around the outside of my design. There's already some trim around the outside that I'm just sort of following and I did pull the paint up a little bit higher uh, so that you could see it when you were looking front on looking at the artwork. And I'm using a small artist brush for this so that I can be a little bit more precise but it is sealed so if I go out of the lines I can take a baby wipe and I can go in and I can actually move some of the paint from where I don't want it. When my paint has started to dry I'm going to do some wet distressing with a baby wipe. I'm going to pull some of that green back so that you can see a little bit more of the buttercream underneath. I just want this to have a bit more of a cottagey sort of weathered feel. To finish this off, I'm going to be using the Crackle Style stamp from the Vintage Textures stamp with IOD black ink. So I've inked up part of my stamp and you can see I'm just sort of gently laying it down here and there. I'm not pressing the whole thing. And then I'm going to come in with a baby wipe shortly and I'm actually going to wipe back some of my ink. Remember the gloss clear coat has sealed my paint. So I've got a little bit of work time. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to gently remove some of the ink. It's not going to completely remove it. It's going to give it a more faded vintage feel here. Finally, I'm going to attach a little hook up to the top so that someone can hang this on the wall if they want to. So I'm pre-drilling a small hole and then I'm going to actually be using a screwdriver to put the screw in. Because this is a very thin board, I didn't want to accidentally have my screw go all the way through. And here's our finished artwork. I'm so happy with how this turned out. That melange paint inlay never fails to impress. There's so many fun designs to use. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. 
Our second project is this little wooden home sign. I had it originally and it was knocked off a shelf, so I had to do some repairs to it. We're going to give it a makeover today. I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint over the entire thing, and it's going to take about three coats for full coverage. You'll notice that I swap from my regular Dixie Belle Mini to a small artist brush here. Brush size is definitely key to getting a good finish. If you use a brush that's too big on a project like this, you'll end up with lots of paint pooling. You'll get too much paint, you'll get drips. So you definitely wanna think about that when you're working on your projects. Once my paint is dry, I'm going to be using IOD's Rose Chintz Paint Inlay. This is one of my favorites. I'm going to pull out a sheet from the pack and now I'm working out how I want it to lay on my home sign. So obviously we're not going to be getting full pieces of the design, it's just going to be hints of it. So I've measured where I want it to go and those grid lines are really helping me here to be able to cut exactly what I'm going to need. Now I'm going to add an even layer of our buttercream chalk mineral paint and I've got to be careful not to have too much dripping down into the gaps of the different letters. So I'm applying an even coat, but not too heavy. And once I have that there, I'm going to position my inlay where I want it to go and then very carefully press it down. So as I said, we're not going to get full design here. There's just going to be hints of those beautiful leaves and those beautiful florals. Once I have it all pressed down, I'm using my mister to dampen the inlay and then I'm using a damp cloth to apply some pressure. After about an hour, my inlay is dry, so I'll come in with my mister again and dampen the inlay and give it about 60 seconds. And then I'm going to be able to come in and start to very gently pull it away. Remember, there's just going to be little bits of the design on our home sign. And already I'm thinking that this looks really sweet. Once my sign is dry, I'm going to seal it with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer. Once my spray sealer has dried, I'm going to come in with a light coat of Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I just like to be thorough to make sure it's completely sealed. When that's dry, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Au Naturel Voodoo Gel Stain, and I'm just brushing it on, and then I'm taking a paper towel shortly, and I'm going to start dabbing and wiping away some of the excess. This is going to give us a lovely vintage worn feel, but it's not going to be as heavy as say a brown glaze. I'm going to apply the Au Naturel over the entire sign, including the inside. I just really want to tone the entire thing. If you don't have the same product that I'm using today, you could create perhaps a paint wash or you could go ahead with some sort of an antiquing wax. When my stain is dry, I'm going to use a little bit of Dixie Belle's Brown Bestang Wax and I'm just hitting the edges of the sign and the interior of the letters. Again, this is just going to add to that wonderful vintage feel that we're going for. It's going to be very subtle. I'm not going over the entire thing with it. I'm just hitting certain areas. And here's our finished home sign. I love how this turned out. I think it looked quite dated before and now it has a really fresh feel. That rose chintz paint inlay is just the nicest, subtlest touch. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. 
Our next project is this little tray. I thought it was lovely to start off with, but I just didn't like the lettering in the center. I wanted something a bit more neutral. So I'm going to paint the entire tray with two coats of Dixie Belle's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint. Silk Mineral Paint has a built-in stain blocker, so it's going to help block out the lettering that was originally on the tray and any tannins that wanna peek through on that wood. Silk Mineral Paint also has a built-in sealer, so I will not have to go over this with any sort of sealer or wax once I'm done. I actually ended up adding a light third coat on the center and now I'm speeding up the drying process to get a little bit of the cracked paint effect. This is what happens when you speed up drying on a paint that has a built-in top coat. I'm now going to be using the cow from the farm animals stamp and I'm just going to position the cow in the center to start off with and I'm using IOD's permanent black ink to ink up my stamp and then I'm going to very carefully position it in the center and once I have it where I want it, I'm going to press down. I'm using one hand to hold it in place at all times while the other hand moves around the stamp applying pressure to make sure we have a good transfer of the image. I wanted to add some text under the cow and I thought that the pure thick cream design from the crockery stamp collection would be perfect. So I'm going to just take that top design there and I'm going to ink up just the top part of the stamp and I'm then going to be using a baby wipe to very carefully wipe off any of the areas where I don't want the image to transfer. So anywhere that I've got the ink except for the text that I want to use, I am wiping that off with a baby wipe. To get the stamp in the exact position I want it to go in, I've taken it off the backing. I'm positioning it just under the cowl and then I'm going to very carefully press down on the text that I want to transfer. I'm then going to be using the chipped paint design on the top left there of the Vintage Textures stamp. I'm inking that up and I'm going to be putting that randomly on the tray. I'm not going to press the entire design down. You'll see that I just sort of press in certain areas uh, just to get a bit more of a random effect. There are four slightly different styles in the chippy paint design from the Vintage Textures stamp. So I'm just taking a couple of them and randomly adding them to the tray. I'm adding them to the sides. I'm going to add it all over the tray, but obviously I'm just sort of lightly pressing here and there. I'm not inking up every time and I am going to do one of my favorite things shortly and that's use a baby wipe to actually wipe back some of the intensity of the ink. You'll see that it definitely adds to a bit more of an authentic look to do that because it's not as contrasting and it sort of actually ties in with the areas that I didn't go as heavy with my paint over the original gray tray. And now I'm just grabbing my ink pad and lightly going around the edges to add a bit of that darkness. Again, just to give it that distressed look. Something to keep in mind is that you cannot necessarily wipe back all inks. I can only speak to the success that I've had using IOD ink and I have been able to wipe back this ink without any smearing. So I don't know what other inks are like. They may smear. So I definitely suggest that if you want to give this a go, that you try it out first on perhaps some scrap cardboard or some, some surface that you can paint and seal and then do this on. The paint has to be sealed in order for you to be able to wipe it back, otherwise the ink soaks in too fast.
To age this up even further, I'm going to water down some of Dixie Belle's Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain and I'm applying it over the top of my Silk Mineral Paint and I am wiping it back. I also use a mister in certain areas to get even more of the product back. I want it to lightly tone the paint and I want more of it sitting in the corners and crevices of the tray to make it look like it's worn over time and that's just where the dirt or whatever has accumulated over time. You could definitely leave this step out if this look wasn't for you. You could use a paint wash instead or you could even do some sort of a brown wax as well. So I'm going to be applying the stain to the entire thing uh, including the bottom as well. I'm then going to almost dry brush the edges and a little bit more in the corners. I'm not adding any extra real product left. I don't have much left anyway, and that's just going to darken up those areas. To finish this off, I wanna add some twine to the handle. So I'm applying some hot glue underneath the handle for my twine to initially be attached to. And then I'm going to be wrapping the twine around the handle. I did start off in this larger sort of ball of twine, but ended up cutting off a smaller length. And I'm going to apply glue along the handle here and there just to make sure that it's secured properly. I just love the rustic feel that adding twine to a project brings, but if this look isn't for you, you could always leave this step out. This was a little bit of a time consuming part of the project, so I have sped up the rest of this process for you guys. And here's our finished tray. I love how this turned out. It's definitely now more my style. I never tire of using the amazing IOD stamps. It just gives everything the most authentically aged, beautiful look. And I hope that it's shown you that you can just use bits and pieces of stamps to get the look that you're after. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. Our final project is a quick and easy one. I wanted to give this jug a makeover. I did decide to paint it with Rust-Oleum's Gloss White to save some time. And I'm going to be adding one of the traditional pots transfers over the top. And you can see here, I have given it a coat of that spray paint. There was a lot of design underneath. I was just worried about how many coats of paint it would take to actually hide that lemon design. So the spray paint was just a little bit easier in this situation. And I'm just going in now with the transfer stick and I'm gently rubbing the design on. I'm starting in the center and then working my way out and I'm taking my time so that I don't accidentally rip or tear the transfer. And then once I've completely adhered the transfer down, I will seal this with Rust-Oleum's Gloss Clear Coat Spray. And here's our finished little jug. This was such a fun, quick and easy project that anyone can do and it is so effective. Those transfers are stunning. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed today's projects and that it's inspired you to perhaps give some things around your home a makeover. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, comment and let me know which of these projects was your favorite and share it out to a friend that you think might like it too. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.